Will 10 Stack Start become the next Next.js? Today, we're diving into 10 Stack Start, a full stack React framework that brings together server side rendering, streaming, and server functions in a unified, type safe experience. In this short video, I'll explain what 10 Stack Start is and why it's gaining traction, and overall how it compares to alternatives like Next.js. I wanted to make this into a longer tutorial, but 10 Stack Start is still experimental. I will show to you how to test it out if you want to and explain its many important features. But before we get into this video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, it would help a lot. Let's begin by exploring what 10 Stack Start really is. 10 Stack Start leverages the powerful 10 Stack Router to offer a full stack solution that handles everything from server side rendering to streaming, all while providing a seamless integration with server functions and a strong focus on type safety. Imagine having a framework that not only renders your pages on the server and streams them efficiently to your users, but it also makes API calls and data fetching type safe from end to end. If you want to start setting up a 10 stack start project, you have to choose one of their initial setups. Let's start off by just choosing the setup which includes React Query by default. By running this command that you see on the screen, you will generate the boilerplate project in your computer. In our 10 stack start project, the app folder contains essential files such as the client.tsx for client side hydration, the router.tsx for configuring routes, and the ssr.tsx for server side rendering. The routes folder holds your application's page components, for example, the index.tsx file. Every time you want to create a new route, you can just create a new file in this folder and the page component will be automatically generated with the boilerplate code. This clear separation between the client, server and routes helps to maintain a robust full stack architecture with full type safety. It's honestly really cool and it's one of the reasons why I recommend 10 stack router over possibly even React Router, because by simply organizing your files, you can get a robust and auto-generated types that streamline your entire application. The way these routes are created are through the create file route function. This function is used to define route based on a URL pattern. For example, take a look at this code. The users slash user ID is the path, where the user ID is a dynamic parameter. The route configuration specifies custom components for error handling, for example, the user error component, the main view, the user component, and a fallback for when the user isn't found, making the entire routing process both type safe and extremely customizable if you want to change those components. It also allows you to pass a loader function that receives both the route context and a, the dynamic parameter then uses that information together with the query client from React Query to ensure that the necessary user data is available before rendering. Speaking on loaders, if you don't know what they are, they're functions that attach to routes that fetch the necessary data before the page renders. So they run both on the server and on the client, ensuring that your components have the data they need right away and providing a smooth server side rendering experience. Additionally, loaders work seamlessly with caching solutions integrated with React Query, making your data fetching both efficient and type safe. Here is a great example of a route in 10 stack start that will leverage React Query. In this example, we define a file based route for the users slash user ID file using the create file route function. The loader calls the get user by ID server function, which leverages Prisma uh, to fetch a user from a database. You don't have to use Prisma, but in this example, we are. The route specifies the custom components for error handling and a not found scenario. Inside the user page component, we retrieve the initial data provided by the loader and use the React Query's use query hook to manage and cache the user data, allowing for efficient data refreshing with the refetch function if we want to. That get user by ID function, by the way, is what is known as a server function. And server functions in 10 stack start let you define a logic that runs exclusively on the server, yet they can be invoked from loaders, hooks, components, and even other server functions. They are similar to API routes, but without a stable public URL. And they enable you to securely access sensitive data, perform operations like database queries, sending emails, or interacting with services that you can't really do in the client. You define one by using the create server function method, and you can attach input validation with the validator function directly to it and ensure type safety and proper error handling that way. 
This means that even if you call these functions from the client code, the logic itself always executes on the server with the client calls being replaced by fetch requests under the hood without you having to do anything. Now, to make all of this work, the project comes with a router.tsx file that looks a little bit like this. As they explain, all of this is still experimental. I mean, you can create a project with it, but some of the code, especially in this file, might change in the future. The router.tsx file sets up a central router for your application by creating a new React query client and integrating it with the 10 stack router. It imports the generated route tree to configure the routes, which is generated every time you add a file. It passes the query client via the context and specifies default components for errors and not found scenarios, which again, you can change for each specific route later on when you create them. If there's one thing that you should take out of this video is the word type safety, because that's in my opinion, the main benefit for 10 stack start and anything 10 stack related. Finally, 10 stack start offers a great alternative to Next.js by providing a unified type safe full stack framework that integrates server side rendering, streaming and server functions. Now to answer the real question, is this a Next.js killer? Well, it's important to note that 10 stack start is still experimental and it also has a relatively small community. So while it's very exciting for its potential, only time will tell how it evolves and scales in production environments. There are other great alternatives as well that I think are better than Next.js, like React Router version 7 and possibly 10 stack start. Overall, thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment below. Also, sign up for my newsletter at the top of the description so you can get announcements and discounts when I release my new React.js paid course. Again, thank you so much for watching and I see you guys next time.